please hit that subscribe button and give this video a like as well as turn on your notifications so you won't miss when I upload a new video. With that said, let's get on with today's video. Okay, so here is the printer. I just removed all the stuff out of it. Let me see if I can get a better angle. Yeah, I just removed all the stuff out of it. So now I am going to go ahead and fill up my tanks. And I'm also going to go ahead and attach this. I'm not going to plug it in yet, the power cord, but I'm going to attach it. So let me go around here and do that. Okay, if you guys remember when I was doing a live last time, I put my ink inside that the sublimation printer and it didn't work. It was defective. And uh, yeah, it just didn't work. So now that ink was close to $50. It was some Cosmos ink. And I don't, I didn't want to run the risk of paying for this again and, you know, it not working again. So this time I just bought some ink off of Amazon. I bought this brand, you know, I don't really sell my sublimation print. So even if this ink doesn't work the best, it's fine, but it had pretty good reviews. I'll link it down below if I like it. But yeah, this is the ink I use, or I'm going to use this time. But the ink I normally use is, the ink I normally use is, let's see if I can get it to focus, is Cosmos ink. And then I'll just use this one. This is one for my 2720, and I'll just put this in there. But yeah, that's the ink I normally use. Today I'm going to use this one, and hopefully... You know it works so all I'm gonna do is go ahead and um, I removed all the packaging I'm gonna go ahead and fill up my ink tanks and um, then I'll go ahead and um, plug it in and turn it on and see and make sure everything is as it should be but this is how the ink comes when you take it out it honestly looks just like all the other inks, just the other inks have a different label. And people always tell me that all the inks are pretty much the same, like they come from China. So, you know, the only thing I will say is Cosmos ink, their black is um, bigger than this. And I kind of want to use the bigger black ink, but all of it doesn't fit in. So I guess this should be fine. But yeah, the, the black ink is bigger on the Cosmos um, ink. It's, they get more in the bottle. But the rest of the bottles are the same size. So there's my cyan, my magenta, and my yellow. Now, I caught this ink on a deal. It was um, on sale for I think $14.99 at the time or $15. It was on like a big sale. I'm hoping, you know, that's not because it's just trash ink. But we will see. And I'm sorry, you guys, for all the moving. I just want to show you what it looks like right here. So this is what you see when you open up the, the ink panel. So the ink thing slides down here. You have to, of course, lift up this. And the ink thing is down here. I had to learn last time that I need to flip that back, that little lever right there, flip it back. Now to fill the ink, I'm just going to lift this forward and you see it has each color for one of the slots. So I'm just going to open up the black one and then I'm going to take my bottle of black ink. Please make sure that you are paying attention to which ink you're putting in which slot because you don't want to put the wrong color, you know, where it doesn't go. 
Now these bottles are a little different. They're not the ones with um, the Epson top like the Cosmos ink has, but I don't know if you can hear that. Let's be real quiet. Let's see if you can hear it. You can definitely see that it is still actually um, filling up. And I'll show you the difference between the two bottles. Um, give me one second. Let's see. I'll just leave you here while that's filling. And let me grab the other bottle so I can show you the difference between the tops. So... Okay, so this is a Cosmos ink bottle. Let's see if you can focus. Okay, so this is a Cosmos ink bottle, like I said. This is the comparison of the two in size. So you get way more black. And I think that's because the black, of course, runs out quicker. Most people do a lot of black design, so the black runs out quicker. Now let me show you the top of the Cosmos bottle. These are the bottles that I like. They match the grooves in the top of the Epson um, printer tank which I'll show you in just a second once that black is done. I think it might be done. Let's see. And you can see like the top of this one is just round. It does fit down over the round part of the, the bottle though. And what I'm also noticing I don't know why my phone is not focusing as well as it normally does. So what I'm also noticing, y'all, is look, it did not fill it up completely. So this ink is not going to last me as long. The, the Cosmos bottles always go up to the top line. This one did not go up to the top line. So it might just be because the Cosmos Black is more. We'll see with the other colors, but um, whether it goes all the way up to the top or not. But this one did not um, go all the way up to the top of the line with this black. So I do, like I say, recommend the Cosmos ink if you can get it. But this is this will just do now. I do for now. I didn't want to pay another fifty dollars for ink, and then this printer may not work because again, this is a refurbished printer. Now that is the circular section that I was showing you right here is where that other bottle fits right over but you see the grooves across here that's where the Cosmos ink um, bottle fits in and it fits in just like the normal Epson ink bottles so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish filling up this printer and then I'll plug it in and we can get started and hopefully all goes well okay and next color is the blue so I'm just gonna open the top and put the blue down and with these I notice you do have to kind of push just a little bit to get it started but you don't have to push too hard and you can hear it once it starts filling so that's how you know you'll have it you have it in the right um, place and I'll just get my next bottle ready, which is the magenta. I try not to um, open all of them at once because I don't want to grab the wrong one and put the wrong one in the wrong colors. So I'll just let these go ahead and finish filling up. And then once they are done, like I said, we'll plug it in and we will turn it on. I'm going to go ahead and get my computer ready to go to download the drivers and stuff it might already be on here from when I was doing the last um, trying to download it the last time and it didn't work correctly I see the user guide so maybe I can find the support file I mean the download files on here also Okay, I think the blue is done or the cyan is done. 
Okay. No, there's still more. I wonder can more fit. And you'll know whether more can fit there or not because it'll keep going. But I, I think that's all that can fit in there. And there's more. It's funny. There's more blue left in here. When normally with the Cosmos ink, I don't have any more of these colors left. But I always have more black left. So that's a um, surprise to me. So next, like I said, I'm going to do my magenta. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and open it up on the, um, on the computer because I couldn't um, find it on my computer. I couldn't find the files from last time. So I'll just redo the whole thing. Don't know why this one is not coming out. Might be clogged. Okay, so I guess that's another thing that can happen. It looks like that one is clogged or I just didn't put it on correctly. So let me see what's going on with that and try again. Okay, I think it's going in now. Yep, there we go. So um, what I'm gonna do today on this video is I'm gonna set it up and I think I'm gonna do a test print and a test press. I just wanna see how these colors go. I'll show you my print settings. I think I'm gonna use the same print settings as I use with my 2720 just to see you know, if it does the same because I get really good prints from my 2720. And hopefully it's the same quality, if not, I can't say that it's you know not my fault. It's it's probably just me buying a cheaper ink, but honestly, I just didn't have the money to spend again on fifty dollars worth of Cosmos ink again. And I could have used the syringes to like pull it out and all that different stuff, but honestly, it was just more of a hassle than it it was worth you know to be worth it. So I just went ahead and bought some different ink and. I think this one is done. And now the last color I have to do is the yellow. And the yellow is filling up. And once that's done, we're gonna power it on. I'm so excited, scared, but excited. Because last time I did this was on my first live, which was a disaster, I feel like. I was already scared to do a live and then I get on there to set up the printer and yeah, it was a mess. I feel like it's not enough pink in there. I'm gonna go back and add some more magenta because I feel like, um, the magenta is a little low. Maybe it just needed a little time to settle. I don't know if you guys can see that. The levels there. Let's see. Yeah, the levels right there. So the yellow is filling up just fine, but I feel like the magenta needs some more. And the black filled up just fine. I mean the black and the blue filled up just fine. So I'm just listening for it to stop glugging and then I'm just watching that arrow. It's lines right here underneath the arrow so you can see where it should stop. And then I don't hear the bottle going anymore so I'm just going to take that one off. I'm going to go back and try to get some more magenta out of here. I don't know if it was just this bottle. Oh shoot. I don't know if it's just the bottle or if it's the the um, stuff that came out when you did Let me clean that up. Yeah, 
and let me open only the top again and put more magenta down in there. And I think I got it. I think this bottle might have had a clog in it or something. I'm going to let that settle for a second to see if that did what it was supposed to do. These feel about even now, so I think that was enough. But yeah, there's no black left, and there is like the slightest bit left of each one of these. Like maybe right up here to the um, label line on all of those three colors and no black <clears throat> okay so I got all the ink in removed all the packaging and everything so the next thing I'm going to do is it says to lift this which this is just a control panel it can go down or go up um, there is a your paper tray back here, paper tray back there, smaller paper tray down here, and as a matter of fact, I need some white paper. Anyway, yeah, smaller tray down here. And I'm just going to put a sheet in here for when I need to set up the, um, the um, printer settings or whatever when I need to test them. I'll just put a couple of sheets of regular paper in there. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> excuse me. Last time, this is where the issue arose. So hopefully this time it's not even an issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let me see if I can move you guys a little closer to see what it says while I'm doing this. Okay. So I already have it plugged in and I'm just going to hit the power button. I think I put, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to hit the power button. And then I'll go through the steps on the screen, just like last time. So it's asking me my language, English, USA, it is still, still summer here. Uh, what time is it? 1.23. And it, today is August the 5th. And it is 2021. My birthday is in eight days and I'm so excited. So I'm going to put, um, let's see, it is, let's go back, I'll put it in 12 hours. It is 123 and it is PM. Oh, PM. Now, when you set up these printers, you have to charge the ink. And that's where I had the issue last time. Something was wrong with the um, printer. It gave me one error, and then it kept, Then after that error um, got fixed, it gave me another error. And then after that error got fixed, it gave me something that said, like, I don't know, something, some machine part had entered its end of life stage. It was something crazy. Basically, the machine was a dud, and I had to uh, contact them and uh, get a replacement. So, this is the replacement. Okay, let's dismiss that. Okay. I think you have to hold down the question mark when you hit that but um, that screen that says look at the start here this is the start here page 
if I'm showing you guys correctly. This is the start here page. It comes in the box in the bag with your ink. You just look at this and it'll tell you what things to do in what order. Um, it's pretty much the same as my 2720. I think only a couple of things were different. But on the screen now, after you hold down that question mark, it'll bring you to a screen to tell you about filling the ink. I've already filled my ink, so I'm going to click proceed. Now, this is where I had the issue. So it says start initialization. Confirm that the ink is uh, filled, the tank is filled with ink. So I'm going to click done. And it says it'll take about 10 minutes. And so fingers crossed, I get no errors this time. And it just does what it's supposed to do. It'll just make a lot of noise and it'll do that. While that is going, I am downloading the um, software to my computer as well. I didn't even decide on what I'm going to test print today. I have a couple of Etsy orders um, to do and I'm glad that I got this in time because a couple of them do can use the bigger um, size. So maybe I'll test print one of those prints like on some of just my fabric, my scrap fabric. Or I wanted to try an all over onesie, baby onesie. So maybe I'll do that. I'm not sure yet. I'll figure it out before um, this gets done. I'll figure out what exactly I want to test print. Let me see what. Let me see what um, designs I have already ready that I can just um, print. This was my birthday present to myself. Um, I don't usually ask for anything for my birthday, so I really, I'm a machine person, I'm a techie person, and plus I want to do every craft imaginable. So after I got that 2720 and I started using it and I loved sublimation I already knew I wanted to go bigger and I felt like it was always out of reach though because this printer is expensive um, it's really really expensive now I just we lucked out um, Crafty Nimbus Design Sierra she saw it on um, Epson Clearance Center and put out the notification on Discord and so I was able to go and get one. Um, and I looked out on that. I mean, I got unlucky in the first one <laughs> in that the first one didn't work, but I still lucked out and got it at a discounted price. So that worked out and I'm glad that I have it because now I can do different things and I can do bigger designs with the sublimation. So I'm happy about that. I'm just gonna look through my designs and see. I do want to make a tote bag in the coming days. So I think that I'm gonna go ahead and press some of the fabric that I designed in Canva so that I can make a tote bag out of it. That's what I wanna do. It looks like the printer is working now. I'm so happy. I was really, really scared that it was not going to work this time again. And I was going to be sad and let down. But it works. It looks like it's, it's working. Now the next obstacle is to see about <laughs> whether this ink is going to hold up and this ink is going to be um, good for printing. So this will be an ink review as well. So. Two in one. Printer unboxing and setup and an ink review. And actually a three in one because I'm gonna test print. So another thing that, that I am excited about with this bigger printer is I believe that it can go borderless, if I'm not mistaken. I'll find that out when I go to setting up the printer settings, but I think it should be able to be borderless. And I love borderless printing, like my um normal printer my my normal um hp printer that i have which is like my favorite thing in the world it is borderless and that's how i make all my um 
that's how I make all my coloring books. And some of my other items I use, I need borderless because it needs to be a certain size. And that printer, the limit on it is eight and a half by 14. So I'm limited to the size that I can print, but by it being borderless, I can, you know, I can print borderless and make it a little bigger, if that makes sense. Okay, so it says initial initialization complete. Move on to print quality adjustments. So I'm gonna adjust. I'm gonna perform a print head nozzle check. And I have letter paper in this, just regular letter paper. And I'm doing the nozzle check. Now I'm on Canva right now. And I just want to see what kind of like retro backgrounds they have because I really want to make like some 90s inspired um, fabric. 90s or 80s. Oh, that was quick. Okay. It says. Let me show you guys. It looks really good. You're looking to see if it's missing segments or anything, and it is not that I see missing any segments. I don't know if you can see it on here. So I'm gonna put uh, that one, and I'm gonna adjust the um, alignment. We put um, more paper in. And now I'm printing alignment. It asks for four sheets of paper. So I added four sheets there. And we'll just let it do its thing. And while it's doing its thing, I'm going to look for backgrounds. It says select the pattern that shows no gap or dark line. So I have to look at these. There's a gap in that one. No gap or dark line. And it's kind of hard. A lot of like a lot of them don't have a, a gap or anything, but a couple of them are like slightly off, and you have to really look. I hope I did it right.
Okay, so it's still print is printing the second part of the alignment page now. Okay, and on the screen it says choose the square with the fewest streaks. On number one, the square with the fewest streaks is number seven. Number two. Number three. And you just go forth and do all of that on this, on all of the squares. This page says select the pattern that shows no gap or dark line. So on number one, it is number seven. And on number two, Choose the rectangles, <clears throat> excuse me, choose the rectangles that are not separated or overlapped. None of mine are separated or overlapped, I don't think. Now um, it says to select your paper size. I'm gonna um, put it to premium presentation mat. And I'm not quite sure what paper size to put it on, honestly. So, cause it doesn't have, I'm not sure what size the 13 by 19 is. I know I don't see that here, but I'll figure that out. And once I figure that out, then I will um, be ready to go ahead and test print. So I will be right back. Okay, so now I am going to I believe just down, do the um, software so I can connect the computer, I mean, connect the printer to um, to my Wi-Fi network and everything. Um, I already downloaded everything onto the computer. Uh, and on the screen it says, you know, it's telling you about first time setup and once you fill the ink cartridges and everything, 
Clint Nix once it's done charging, which my ink is done charging. So it is now searching for my printer. I have pretty good Wi-Fi, so it should pick it up. Sometimes it doesn't, but hopefully this time it picks it up. And let's do a wireless connection. next and now it's setting up the Wi-Fi on my printer which is good now um, once I'm done with this part I'm gonna switch over to or I'm gonna add in a clip of me on my computer actually setting up the printer settings so I will be back once I get it connected to my Wi-Fi and uh, after that clip of me setting up the computer settings, I'll be right back to um, go ahead and get a test print going. Now, I was about to like 50%. So this is the, um, well these are the fabric designs that I played around with on Canva. A couple of them, like this one is just like a seamless pattern that was in Canva's um, Elements. I just want to try it and see what it'll print like. I think it's pretty. So that one, this one is a little bit of a mixture. It was a seamless pattern, but I changed it and I added different things to it to make it more of my own. And it didn't have, it wasn't black at first, it was just white. And I just changed a bunch of stuff about it. Um, but normally I create the, my fabrics from scratch, like this one, I create it from scratch. And I think it's really cute. I wanna make some Christmas stuff with it. And basically it's just like gingerbread cookies or Christmas cookies on a blue background with red, green, and white sprinkles. So I'm going to go ahead and try to set up my printer to print these things. So. The first thing that I am going to do is already picking up my printer at ET15000 series. Hold on one second, you guys. Sorry, let me go turn the dishwasher off. Sorry about that noise. Okay, so like I was saying, I have my design open up in can um, inside uh, Adobe. And I made this in Canva. This is just open in Adobe Acrobat Pro DC. Um, I do have the Creative Suite and I get a discount from it because of my kids. I have uh, student age kids and to any parents out there that want to or to any of the people watching that want to try Adobe but don't necessarily want to pay that monthly amount that I, th I think is really expensive. Um, you can sign up for a student account or a teacher account um, and you do get a discount. I think my first year I paid $14.99 and I think now I might pay $19.99 or somewhere around there, but it's worth it. You get the full entire, all of them. You get uh, Photoshop, you get Illustrator, uh, all the After Effects, you get all those different things. Um, to try out and play around with so I feel like it's worth it but on this page the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click um, properties and you make sure your correct printer is um, selected right here now I wasn't sure how to change the um, paper size here um, to 13 by 19 but I'm guessing that I just, oh, here it is, Super B. Okay, when I was trying to set it up on the printer, it did not have um, that option on the printer itself, but I see it now when I'm in the settings. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna set it up the same way I set up my Epson 2720. And if I can remember correctly, everything is, the, the paper is, premium presentation presentation paper mat so premium presentation paper mat quality 
Hi. Um, I'm gonna go to more options and I'm going to go to custom and I want to say it's advanced and is it ICM or is it color it's color controls and I just changed from Epson Vivid to Adobe RGB so you change to the Adobe RGB it's been a few months since I set up my um, 2720 so I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head you do want to mirror image I'm not sure whether you leave on bi-directional printing I'm gonna take it off for right now and I want to I want to go and just click this because I haven't clicked this I did all that okay I want to find where it says it usually says um, like quick print or fast print or something like that I don't want a fast print but I don't see that here so maybe I don't have to worry about that I'm not exactly sure so I believe I have everything the way it's supposed to be quality high color two-sided printing off let's click this and see what it is okay cancel uh, restore default ink okay let me double check before I make my um, preset uh, custom watermark features nope okay I mean and this will just be a test it'll it'll either work or it won't so I am gonna do a print preview I like to see my um, items before I do it but basically now instead of just clicking OK I'm gonna click add or remove preset now most of the time in a normal printer you can use these if I want to create a um, new preset so let me close this out and do it again I'm gonna click again add or remove preset I'm gonna name it sublimation 13 by 19 and I'm gonna give it a yellow book icon and I'm gonna put test um, under this one just so I'll know and I'll put test first print here just so I can remind myself that this was my first time using this and and then there it is right there so you make it you make your preset over here with all your different um um, things and then down here you can look if you click it you see all your different presets you see all your um things. I'm gonna start with this one and we will see what it does so again I'm just gonna click that and I'll click OK for now and then I'm back at my screen I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm gonna test print this one first so I want to print the current page, not the current page, I want to pr print page two. And I'm going to print page two and I'm going to make sure everything is correct. I know I have my preset chosen over here in properties and then I am just going to click print
So you guys, I had to come in on this clip and do a voiceover. My house was a little loud. There was some music playing that would definitely get me a copyright strike. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, explain what I was doing from here. After the clip of me printing the first um, fabric design, I went ahead and printed both of the other ones, the gingerbread cook Christmas cookie one and the um, flower one. I went ahead and printed all three just so I could test print them. Um, I'm using the fabric that I linked in my other uh, fabric videos and it should also be linked below in my description box but I'm using the poly twill just to test out these fabric designs and I'm just going to uh, go ahead and attach them to my paper and take them over to the heat press one by one and press them now one thing that I learned through doing this is that if you don't have a big enough heat press it is definitely harder which I already knew but I didn't think about so much it's harder to press things that are as big as the paper that you now have so from now on I won't press anything at one time bigger than the 15 by 15 of my heat press because I really really struggled and it frustrated me and I didn't really enjoy the process much and I don't like crafting when I uh, get frustrated by it. It makes me not want to do it as much. And so now you see here, right here, you see the um, space themed fabric I made and it came out so nice. The one thing I'll say is the next time I do it, I need to make sure that I make it smaller first off and I do press it with more pressure so that it'll get more of that ink off the paper because I had a lot of ink left. Here is the sugar cookie or gingerbread cookie design pressed. That one had a lot of issues as well because again, I was trying to press it in two sections and I wasn't getting even pressure and I was just having a hard time. So here we are at the end. I'm just going to show you the ink, the way it um, transferred is really bright and nice, but you see there my transfer moved when I was trying to press the second half on that first green one. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut off the part that moved and keep a sample of the pieces that worked right because I'm sure I could find something to use them for. And they are so pretty and vibrant. You see that? And the next one is the, um, I did print two pieces of that as a matter of fact. Yeah. So this one was better. Um, it still kind of shifted a little bit, but it was better than the other one. So I'm going ahead, going to go ahead and cut that as well and just have it and use it for something small. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll practice a coin purse or something like that, but that's what I'll use that for. Hmm. And my edges on this fabric are a little ragged because I got so frustrated in the beginning from um, not really knowing how to press the bigger pieces on my small heat press that I just, I don't know how I cut this piece of fabric out. But in the end, it was fine. This one did a little bit better than the other one. And um, I have a usable piece of fabric to use for whatever small project I can find. So after I cut that one out, I went ahead to inspect this sugar cookie one. You see there, I didn't get enough pressure. I have the lines in between, um, but the print overall is vibrant. It's bright. It's so pretty. I love it so much. I can't wait to reprint it. Now there I'm pointing out the yellow pieces, the yellow residue that the heat tape that I used, um, used this time left on my fabric. It did leave it on every piece of fabric on the white parts. So I would not recommend that one. I do have one. I do recommend down in my description box if you would like to use that, but I'm just repeating the same process going through and I'm cutting around all of my fabric. The black space fabric was perfect. I do think that if I give it a little more pressure or a little more heat, I can get that black even darker, but it's still beautiful. It's no um, imperfections on it. And I'm glad because I'm going to use that to make a tote bag um, in the upcoming um, week. I believe my birthday is on Friday the 13th. <laughs> so um, maybe I'll go ahead and um, make a tote bag for that day. I'm not quite sure yet what I have going on, but uh, I will let you all know, but yeah, these fabrics came out so nice. 
it's so satisfying to see like fabric that I designed myself come to life. But that's all I have for you all today in this video. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. Please like, subscribe, comment, all of that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.